It's a black couple and they're speaking out after being on the receding end of vandalism and racist threats for some time now. Here is this couple, here's a photo of them. This is Reginald Wilkerson and his fiance, Tanathi Addison. Now they own a home there in West Ellis. That is a suburb of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And they said they've been targeted at least five times since the beginning of the year by racist vandals. They've had the tires on their silver sedan slashed multiple times. And most recently, well, the driver's side window was bashed in, but it doesn't end there. This is what we know. The most insidious part of the attack may be the notes left behind. Multiple handwritten letters tucked into plastic bags threaten the couple using expletives and the N word multiple times. Let's check out some of these racist letters that are left behind for this couple. Get the F out of my neighborhood N word. And another said, you thought I was playing about driving and speeding in my neighborhood, you piece of S word. Get the F back to the effing north side where you belong before I put sand in your gas tank. This is in a suburb, mind you, about 11 minutes outside of Milwaukee. And it's called West Dallas. And let's look at the population demographics. Uh, you know, white population by far the majority there. We're talking about some 83% white. Black population is around 7%, so very, very small. And as you can imagine, Receiving these letters and having this experience of having your car vandalized and these threats that this is having quite the impact on this couple. Now Wilkerson told WISN that adding that he has struggled to sleep and that the couple has not kept their baby daughter at the property for fear of her safety. And as of this report here, the perpetrators have not been caught. Yet this couple is essentially changing their entire lives and livelihoods and lifestyles to adjust around these racist hate crimes that are going on. And yeah, I saw the mention of you know driving too fast, but I don't think that's it based on the other language choices. This isn't about speed at all here. This is about melanin count and the thought that this couple should not be living in this neighborhood, but that there is a place for them as it's as it said in that letter on the north side. This speaks to segregation and there's probably a reason that that community there is 83% white because they have worked to keep it that way for some time. And this is going on across the country, Ben. Yeah, I think the most important thing for people to understand in this is recognizing how recent so much of American history really is. Sundown towns reached their peak after the first Star Wars movie came out in movie theaters. So think about this for a second. If you know somebody that is old enough to have seen Star Wars, the first Star Wars movie in the movie theaters, okay, then they are old enough to have participated in the peak of sundown towns. And if you think, oh, but we're in like a northern state and you know, you know, maybe we've got a, like a democratic representative, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's tons and tons of sundown towns all throughout, especially the upper Midwest. In fact, the upper Midwest is some of the highest concentration of sundown towns. And so these people are still around. The people that were, you know, the people that were forming mobs, okay? They're still around. Like, this is not ancient history. And, like, one more point to this fact is that the suburbs, while they keep be being painted as like this sort of peaceful, like idyllic neighborhood and things like that, suburbs were originally literally marketed as exclusively white. The whole purpose of the suburbs, when they were originally marketed to American folks, was to create economic opportunity that was explicitly for white folks. And so while they normally get painted as idyllic, the reality is like the suburbs contain the heart of white supremacy in America. Oof, oof, Ben dropping the knowledge on the history and you're absolutely right. And it's everywhere as well as uh, neighborhood restrictions. And a lot of those things can't be enforced now uh, due to various acts, but they're still there in all sorts of um, you know land agreements and also neighborhood housing association things that have been around forever. And just by virtue of the fact that you have individuals like this person or persons who are sending these letters and creating this vandalism and this damage to scare this black couple out of their community. That tells us that we don't need necessarily any documents that are saying black people shouldn't be there. We have the actions that are meant to impose fear to keep us from being there. And these things are everywhere. So if you're at home and you're looking around in your neighborhood and community and everybody looks like you, 
and you probably could pass a brown paper bag test. Well, you may have a problem and you may want to look for some change. And at least ask yourself, are you isolating yourself from other groups?